Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today we have Stephanie Leffler. I'm really excited to talk who's led multiple successful software startups. If we had all day, we probably still wouldn't get to all the amazing stuff she did. She co-founded Crowdsource, which specializes in providing an elastic labor force for large companies who manage huge bodies of content. To give you an idea, Crowdsource works with companies such as Bed Bath & Beyond, Orbitz, Target, Groupon, Coca-Cola, and many more, has a workforce of 250,000 people. Prior to Crowdsource, Stephanie co-founded Monster Commerce with Ryan Noble, and it's an e-commerce platform that grew to over 8,000 small businesses with annual sales exceeding $20 million and was supported by a staff of 200 people. And Stephanie was awarded Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year finalist recognition for the outstanding success of Crowdsource. And not to mention this, she also co-founded in 2008 Juggle, which grew to a network of websites serving 70 million unique visitors. Stephanie, thanks for joining me. Sure, happy to be here. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie, since it's Inspired Insider, I wanna ask you two questions. One, what's the most painful moment been in business for you and then how you push through it? Um, I would say, one of the most painful moments was, you know, it once again, kind of bittersweet, but when we made the decision to take resources from the properties that had originally been juggle and move them on to, into crowdsource, the moving them into crowdsource was great. That was exciting. It was really smart people. And it was kind of like a dream come true. You get all of this influx of amazing talent that you're already familiar with into crowdsource. But there's definitely a, something that happens when you have to shelf, you know, kind of back burner, I guess is the right way to put it, an idea that you invested a lot of time, money, and effort into. Yeah. Um, even though you're consciously making that decision to deprioritize it for something else, uh, it's painful to think about, you know, if I would have figured this out sooner, if I would have made you know you look back and resources yeah. over it's like yeah, yeah you, you know you feel like there's something that you wish you could have preserved and turned into something more valuable that ultimately you didn't and you know it is what it is but uh that moment is certainly one that's kind of painful yeah yeah and as you you know kind of go on the upward trend with your successful businesses what was a low point when you think back to the early days what was a low point well, I, I mean, the low point actually, <laughs> the lowest point of all extends uh, all the way back before even Monster Commerce mm -hmm. uh, was up and running. Um, when Ryan and I graduated from college, we had started an online store. That was kind of the very first thing we did in business. Mm -hmm. And we uh, took a, we got a loan from a bank and bought a bunch of inventory. We were selling sun protective clothing, which now is super popular everywhere you go. Back then, uh, nobody sold it, and so which is why we thought it was not actually Ahead of the times, that. yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, the, the summer had kind of come and gone, and winter was starting, and we hadn't really, like, the online store hadn't started, like, getting orders, and we had a lot of pressure. There was, we had a loan. We had a lot of inventory sitting on shelves that wasn't going anywhere. Um, I remember waiting to see when Google was going to come <laughs> to, you know, to like index our store and start showing up in searches. No real clue how to make that happen. And, you know, I remember there's an afternoon where we sat down and said, like, has this been a catastrophic <laughs> mistake, you know, to sort of not take the jobs that we were given upon graduating from college at, mm -hmm. you know, in the traditional world and trying to do this. And, uh, you know, it was about a 24 hour period where I thought maybe I should just move back to Virginia and see if I can go beg for the job that I turned down to come mm -hmm. do this. And ultimately we decided, well, people need websites right now. And we had to build this website for this online store. So maybe we can like keep things going a little bit longer by building websites for some people, which I think was actually a course taken by lots of people <laughs> at that time. And managed to build, you know, maybe websites for five or ten companies, and in that process realized 
through our own experience building an online store and through some of these other people's how desperate the need was for like an easy to use do it yourself e-commerce platform and you know fortunately it it didn't take long for us to well i should say it didn't take long for ryan to see that vision <laughs> and uh and ultimately, we were able to turn you know that into something that, yeah. that turned out to be great. But yeah, that that was definitely the low point of you know when when you don't know what to do next, that's really the hardest thing. And yeah. so I think when you're at that point, the most important thing is just to make a decision. You know, make a decision of one thing that you're going to do next. You know, people always say put one foot in front of the other, but you know, it's you have to keep doing something because that's ultimately you just have to trust in the fact that if you just keep doing something, it's going to lead you where you need to go. Yeah. But, um, you know, when it's not working, you also have to realize that you're, su you're supposed to be looking at that point for, for you know, keep right. putting, doing one thing, but be looking for what that opportunity yeah. is. that's going to take you to the next yeah. level. Yeah. That is painful. What's been the proudest moment? Oh, um, so the proudest moment and the one that I'm kind of, I think we'll forever be trying to replicate was, um, you know, at Monster Commerce, we had a team, a big team of people. Ultimately, we had when we sold the company, we had 80 people and there was a group of people of that 80 who, you know, took pay cuts and, you know, were there from the very beginning and mm. really helped us the turn it into something it. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we didn't have uh, stock options or anything like that with people at Monster Commerce, but there were a few people who had truly let, laid it on the line with us. And, you know, I was able, Ryan and I were able to call them into our office and tell them, you know, that we'd made the decision to sell the company. And not only that, but, you know, that they were going to, um, you know, get something out of it in, in a, a very meaningful something. And so it was, you know, I realized in that whole process that I was so glad that we did that because that was actually the most satisfying part of all of it. I mean, clearly it's nice to like work that hard and have something turn out really well. But yeah. when I think about, you know, what actually makes me the happiest, what I want to do again, like selling another company or having another exit event for me is, would be great, but it actually doesn't, it's hard to explain, but it doesn't make me that excited. But mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are sitting in this building outside of these walls right now who have been the same way for this company right. and so that's the most exciting part is thinking about getting to the point that i can help all of the work that they put in turn into something really meaningful for yeah. them yeah yeah